So good afternoon, lovely Friday in August. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, quickly just integrating small scale digestion systems in developing regions, taking a little bit of a different road than we've heard from some of our other great presentations this afternoon. Um, so I just wanted to share with you a little bit um, about these projects. And here is one of the groups that we, I work with in Uganda. Um, I'm talking a bit about these lately because we kind of have come to, after a few years of research um, and work and assessments and development, we've kind of been able to do some review over what we've done and are aligning ourselves for where we want to go in the future. Um, I think our projects have been pretty successful and one of the biggest reasons that I tell a lot of our grantees when they ask us how we manage to get so much done is our project teams. Uh, working internationally um, proves to have a lot of challenges, uh, much more so than we're used to at home, even though those always provide a lot of challenges. Um, so I think picking a good team, um, generally the teams I've been working with have been relatively young um, and have a lot of passion for what they're doing, and so we've seen them be very successful. Um, in addition to the groups we work with um, in, U in Uganda, we also work with, ooh, I keep skipping that one, some in Bolivia, so we have some projects in South America, and we also have um, some partners in Rwanda, so we're trying to expand some of the lessons we've learned in certain regions and try to move them to others. Um, it's been really great to see the group from Uganda and Rwanda kind of getting together. They've learned a lot from each other, of visiting each other's sites, and that served as a really great way to energize them to do some different things. For example, in Rwanda, they had some really great uh, demonstration gardens and had a great way that they set up how to do some educational courses about um, cropping systems and so the Ugandans were very excited to take some of that information back and work that into their system so I think it's really a great idea if we can try to cross um, some of these projects and introduce some of these folks to some concepts going on in other places uh, so digestion systems in developing regions are very similar to the ones we see here most of the systems that we work with use some kind of manure from animals. A lot of these animal facilities are very small, maybe just a few animals. Uh, we have a, a lot of um, food waste being produced at markets. Um, some of our new ideas after we've kind of seen everything that's happened is that we would really like to integrate more systems into these market areas. It can pose some challenges in some countries. Um, as you can imagine, there are people who are covered to handle um, certain uh, waste streams, and then you have overlapping layers of government. I think sometimes it's even hard for us to figure out how things ought to move forward in our own countries, which is another reason you need a really great team. Uh, I can't go to Uganda and figure out the structure there very easily, um, but I certainly can rely on my Ugandan partners to figure out how they may want to integrate and what kind of situations uh, would pose that we might have some success in others that are probably unlikely to, to work very well. Um, they have a lot of slaughterhouse waste. That's another thing about the markets. Most of these slaughterhouses are located in the markets. Uh, the majority of it ends up in rivers and streams. So part of the reason that we sometimes want to introduce these digesters is to cut, try to promote some increased um, effluent management. That doesn't always happen. I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the challenges there. But in addition to producing energy, um, it helps to kind of pull these things together so they don't just get lost along the way, as you saw with the market waste just kind of left in the street or just piling up or being pushed into the streams or the um, waterways. Uh, it, the systems can be very basic. I think one of the challenges of going from somewhere where we try to do lots of things uh, where we're trying to reduce labor is going into an area where you need to know better um, what is the expenses and what does labor cost. And in many places like uh, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, Bolivia, the labor is actually very low cost and it would be better to encourage more job production and maybe less uh, technical or advances in, in some of the ways that we do things. So while there are many ways that we could better collect feedstocks, it is still the cheapest and most effective uh, to have folks ride around on their bicycles or bring them by hand from neighbors. Um, a lot of our systems also integrate human waste. Uh, that poses some additional challenges um, due to the fact that you have a little more concern about 
the effluent and how it's being handled from human waste, but we see that at a lot of places where the digesters make sense, where it's large enough like the school, um, handling human waste is a problem, um, and so they want to be able to gather some of that. Um, they have the resources to come up with the capital as well as they would like to get, recoup some of that um, operating cost by taking advantage of some of the gas to produce, say, food at a hospital or food at a school or something in that manner. Uh, these, uh, we have lots of different designs based on the region. Um, we've learned a lot that if they have expertise or ways they like to do things, we like to stick to that. So this is an underground dome design that they use in Uganda. Um, this is a digester design that's above ground. It's made from a water tank in Bolivia. It's important to look to the partners and modify things based on what they have available, the cost of materials, and sometimes what has worked before or what people have tried that had failed. Um, in Bolivia, I know, you know, the bag digesters, although they're much cheaper, they had had a lot of failed experiences with that due to this is right near the Amazon and the amount of bugs there had eaten those away. So it was important for us not to go along the lines of other failures. Uh, we have, in some places, we have to integrate biogas storage because like in Bolivia, it's very, very hot in the region we've been working. And so uh, we produce some additional gas storage so that we can uh, hold more gas and use it when it's um, available. Generally, we use the gas for cooking um, and many of the systems that helps us to reduce some of the air quality issues and the traditional way a lot of things are cooked. Um, we do a lot of work. You know, this is just one example from a paper, I think that was released just this month, um, where we looked at kitchen air quality and different kinds of feedstocks. And it, um, the biogas really has an impact on particulate matter, so you can really reduce the biogas. Um, unfortunately, if you have use any firewood, we start to see um, that, that creep back up for the particulate matter. Now, th there's all lots of other things you can see in this paper about air quality that I don't have time to go over today. Um, I think the biggest thing still constricting us from maybe taking some of the advantages um, it, not only economically and trying to replace some of the other fuel that people use, but in terms of taking advantage of air quality um, related things and maybe some other things are that the digesters aren't, a lot of times are underproducing what a lot of the installers have quoted them as being. So we need mo a lot more education on how to operate them more effectively and then additional practices to make them more efficient in terms of biogas production. Um, we're doing things in that realm, so to start to look at, well, we need to give them what they need. Things need to be designed for the region. Um, it's kind of a lot of failures we see are not taking the time to integrate into the communities and understand what they need. It's time consuming and challenging, but um, the output from it is really useful. We were getting things back from consumers like this is the way we normally cook food, and this is the kind of stove you're giving us to work on. And so then we could integrate and maybe make a stove that's similar, but where you could have biogas in the top, but also change to firewood in case you didn't have enough biogas to cook your uh, entire meal. One of the really popular things we've seen lately um, is the use of absorption chillers, so using the biogas directly for cooling. Um, those have been really popular in helping people to reduce their spoilage, particularly out in rural areas. Um, again, I mentioned before that we wanted to increase effluent handling. In some cases, we weren't seeing that that was happening uh, after we had done a lot of education and install. So we moved to some basic solid liquid separation in which we've been able to recycle the liquid for water. So that not only reduces some of the handling issues, but reduces the need for labor to go get water um, and adding a, a pretty valuable resource into a waste system like water is not something in a lot of these regions that they want to do. Um, then we have measured a lot of parameters, so looking at those kinds of systems, trying to educate and redesign um, to try to reduce maybe impacts of pathogens or make recommendations for handling of the effluent once it goes out into the field. Uh, we've had a lot of success um, with doing some education and farmer trials. You can see here, this is a producer on the right-hand side of your screen um, is where he applied some digestate, and on the left-hand side is where he used his traditional practices. And so he was extremely happy about his results. It's pretty easy to have good results when you're compared to maybe traditional practices that don't use a lot of nutrients. But we also do a lot of field plots to look at 
Um, are we, how are we comparing if people use traditional inorganic fertilizers? How, what kind of rate should they apply? And we've seen pretty good performance, um, at least similar to inorganic fer fertilizers, if not better, um, in some areas of grain or stove or weight production. We've also looked at just applying the solids. One of the things we noticed here um, was that maybe in drought years, it looks like actually, I mean, logically, putting solids may be much better um, than using uh, the inorganic fertilizers or controls. Uh, so again, after all of this kind of thing, we think there are some really great benefits, particularly in places where they don't have alternative energy options. And actually, a lot of these digesters are more cost effective um, than maybe some other energy options. But we still need to find ways to increase gas production, to do a little more sharing of our information um, from region to region, and to do a little more education. And of course, funding and trying to find the capital costs is always a difficult thing in these places. So we need a little more um, in, uh, invention on ideas on how we could move forward.